Hey, what's up? It's Rob Gordon, the wingman. I'm out here at the lake, and I just had a really fun session testing out the Dekine Cyclone V2. These wings are pretty similar to the Cabrina wings. I think they come out of the same factory. There's some involvement with the brands. I don't really understand it all. So I'm used to riding the Mantis. That's sort of my main wing. But all of my wings are super bagged out now. So I actually just ordered from Adventure Sports the three for one Dekine Cyclone V1s, which are coming next week. And you get three wings for $1,100. I can't afford all these brand new wings all the time. I go through wings in about three to six months doing tricks, riding overpowered, riding a lot. Now I'm kind of regretting buying those wings because I just tested out their V2. And there's a couple of things that make this wing really good. The first thing that makes this wing on a different level is this leading edge. On this 5.0, they say you can pump it up to 10 PSI. Now the wing is white only in the leading edge in a little spot. So I don't know if that's like a special material or reinforced or whatever. And that allows you to pump it up to a higher PSI. But that higher PSI gives you so much rigidity. It allows you to go upwind really well and it allows you to keep the shape when you jump. So your jumps, you just get really good pop. I'm on my super waterlogged board and, you know, I can't really pop it out of the water very much anymore because it's, it's really waterlogged. But when I had wind, I was able to get a couple of nice pops with this stiff leading edge. That's the main thing. I think there's also a little bit more dihedral in this leading edge than even a Mantis V2. It looks like there is to me. It's probably more similar to the V3 Mantis, but I haven't tried that wing yet. It's not the lightest wing because... One thing you'll notice is it has these pretty big windows, which we all just saw that video where the winger crashes into the ferry. So in terms of visibility, this is about as good as it gets without having like an X-ply or something. You can really see out of them pretty well. But that being said, it's super stable. It really, really sits in the pocket. So it's going to be awesome for wave riding. And it's got a nice solid luff handle with uh, the neoprene. So it's it's a really nice setup for luffing. I'm not even going to talk about wave riding this. I think it's going to be awesome for wave riding. But yeah, that stiff leading edge, it's just, it's killer. It's so killer. This wing is really fast. To me, it felt like it had less low end. But you're still able to get going in light wind. You just have to pump the wing a little faster and smaller. So it's not a big slow pump. You kind of just do a little, and you're able to get going, you know, because you, you just generate speed with these smaller pumps. It worked out fine to me. I was on a 6.2 Mantis in between riding this, and I was able to get going in the same sort of wind pretty, pretty easily. Didn't have the low end, though, obviously, of like a 5.0 or 6.2, like V1 Mantis. The wing also has these uh, carbon handles. I think they're carbon. Uh, they're not. I checked the website, and I think if it was carbon, it would have mentioned it, but they were stiff and light. And they're really nice because they're a small diameter, so if you have smaller hands or you're riding with gloves on in the winter, it's going to be really easy to hold on to. They're super stiff. Um, I actually don't even like the handles to be that stiff. I sort of prefer the old Mantis handles. It gives you a little more flexibility doing tricks while still having the rigidity, but if you like stiff handles, this is about as stiff as it gets. It does seem like you probably can ride one-handed. I forgot to try it out there, but the handle goes back pretty far in the front, and it's super well-balanced. I just feel like these Mantis and uh, Cyclones, I think they have a really, really good balance, especially when you're riding in the harness. There's a little bit of padding on, this ha on the handle, which I'm not sure how well that's going to hold up, but it makes it a little softer, so if you hit on your face on it, you should be pretty pretty okay unless you hit it on this one spot right at the top but yeah that that feels it feels really good it, it, it handles really well it's got pinning the the bladder's pinned up top so hopefully it won't fall down really just an awesome wing it really really is 
I hope Dakine sees this video and sends me some wings, some V2s. Look, I just bought the V1s, Dakine. Send me some V2s and I'll make your wings look good and I'll do some more reviews. Help me help you. Jerry Maguire, anyone? There's really only one thing I didn't like too much about this wing. I don't love the colors. Like, this one's sort of like a teal and a orange red. It's not great, in my opinion. I don't like the stripes either. I don't know. It just, it looks a little, it looks a little whack to me. But I think they have some other colors on the website. Maybe those are, those are better. I hope in the future they just go with a more cool design. The white leading edge is nice. It looks okay on the water. It looks fine. But I like a cool looking wing. And this to me is like an average looking wing. But in terms of performance, it's awesome. And I'll have to check the price. But since this is not special materials, it, it should be really good. The main question is, how long will this stiffness in the leading edge hold up if this is not a special material? You know, pumping it up to PSI 10 makes a huge difference. But eventually the Dacron does wear down and then you start getting that flapping. And that's when you lose your upwind performance and you're jumping, you lift. The inflation point is also one thing I don't like. It's the same one as on, on the Mantis. I feel like these valves leak after a while. They get like sand in there and they leak. Not my favorite valves, but whatever, they're fine. You can replace them when they start to go. There's also a dump valve, so it should be easy to, uh, to get your wing deflated. But there's also two hoses, one on each side. So inflation and deflation, I'm assuming, is going to be pretty pretty easy anyway. I don't like that there's there's no clamp on here, though. Um, it's really nice to be able to isolate your strut from your leading edge. I, I don't care about having them at different PSI, but it's just for safety. It's going to be a slower leak if you pop a bladder or something. And then also, if you have a slow leak, it makes it easier to find out where that leak is. You can just leave them both inflated, clamp it, come back in a few hours and see which one's gone down. I don't know, maybe uh, someone can make an aftermarket uh, hose clamp for wings. That would be pretty cool and not very expensive. I should be doing a V1 review as soon as I get those wings in. Look, I mean, three wings for $1,100. I can practice backflips and front flips on them, and if I rip them, like, no big deal. Hopefully, though, the kind will see these reviews and send me some wings. You know, I, I would really love that. This just makes a huge difference. It really does. We'll see if I do some more riding on this. Joe left the wing with me for the weekend, but uh, I don't know. We got some decent footage today, even though I was only on the wing for like 20 minutes. If I had my new board and, you know, these conditions again and was dialed in, I could have some really, really nice shots. Anyway, check these out. They're really good. I, I really, really liked it. And this is a wing bag. It's really big, opens up from the top, easy to get the wing in there. Uh, Joe rode the wing first. He was out there on a big foil, no straps. He was really stoked that I got this uh, heel side tack on camera. He was doing a lot of tacks, actually. Here's a toe side tack, nicely staying on foil. Another toe side tack on foil. Touchdown a little bit on that one. But, you know, the, the, the wing is very maneuverable. It's really good for doing tacks and those kind of things. But I was getting a little annoyed with the tacks. I was like, Joe, do do something else, man. We've seen the tacks now. And so then he did this uh, behind the back tack. I guess it's still a tack, but at least it's something different. And then uh, we were ready to switch. So uh, I asked him what his thoughts were on the wing. All right, Joe just did some uh, footage out there on the water, some nice riding on the big foil. What do you think, Joe? You like the wing? I like it. The handles are great, um, and it has plenty of power, even in marginal width. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm on an old 6.2, and uh, so we'll see if I can get going now on this. I'll do one quick pass and then hand the camera off to Joe. All right, so checking it out. Feels pretty good. Uh, it feels smaller than a, than a regular 5. But if you pump it fast, you can get quite a bit of little power because it's so tight that a frame is really tight. Let's ride a little more and drop it off to Joe. It feels really fast upwind. It's really got a lot of high performance feel to it. I could see this being really good for racing, for sure. Feels really good.
course, I had to do the mandatory flaka. Landed the second one. Really easy to do flakas and wing tricks and any wing maneuvering. Uh, little 360 attempt. It's just a hard trick to land. <laughs> um, I tried this new trick, but the wind died there. I couldn't do my, my new trick I've been working on. Tried a double duck jibe. Should have been able to do that. Just kind of screwed it up. It's super easy to spin the wing. Uh, here, doing attack. You know, if Joe's going to do some attacks, I got to do attack too. And then, yeah, I ended with like one really big flock. I didn't land it because my board kind of got away from me. But yeah, this this wing is awesome. Really, really enjoyed it. I recommend it.